This is not good. There's oil all over the top of the engine and the top of the transmission too. Looks like the valve cover gasket went bad. This is going to be fun. I'm pretty sure the valve cover gasket is bad. On most other cars, this would be a simple repair. But on the ALH TDI engine, the gasket isn't removable. It's built into the valve cover. So apparently Volkswagen expects you to replace the entire valve cover assembly when the gasket goes bad. Needless to say, I'm not a fan of that. I'm also pretty stubborn. So I'm going to try something else. I've read about people using a valve cover gasket from a newer engine and adapting it to fit the ALH valve cover. I was able to find a suitable gasket on Amazon for under 12 bucks. To put things in perspective, a valve cover assembly would cost about 10 times that much. And that's the cheap knockoff version. A genuine Volkswagen valve cover assembly is over 200 bucks. Anyway, let's get that gasket installed. Of course the valve cover needs to come off. I'm going to try to do that without removing the timing cover or the EGR valve. But I will need to remove the PCV system and the intake hose. I'll start with the PCV system. The PCV oil separator is made of plastic and gets brittle with age. So I was careful not to break it. Now I'm going to remove the valve cover bolts. There are seven of them. They're all Allen head bolts. Unfortunately, two of the bolt heads stripped out. And as luck would have it, they're the two most difficult bolts to access. I have an idea for how to remove them. I had to do something similar with the harmonic balancer bolts when I was replacing the timing belt. But to access this one bolt, I'll need to remove the EGR valve. So let's do that. The EGR pipe underneath the EGR valve needs to be removed first. It has two bolts on either end of the pipe. Here's a close-up of the pipe. Space is really tight in there, so it was difficult to get the camera and a light source in there. Now that the pipe is out of the way, I can remove the EGR valve. It has three mounting bolts. By the way, the EGR pipe has a gasket on each end. The gaskets might fall out when you remove it. Also, the O-ring seal fell out of the EGR valve when I removed it. After I detached the EGR valve, I just moved it over to the side. I just need to make enough room to get at the one valve cover bolt. Speaking of which, here it is. Now I have easy access to it. Before I try anything drastic, I'm going to hammer a hex key into the bolt and see if that helps. Nice. So now I only have one more bolt to deal with. I tried hammering in a hex key, but it didn't work. So the next step is to force fit a socket over the bolt head. A 9mm 12 point socket was too small, but a 3 8 inch 12 point was too big. So I tried a 3 8 inch 6 point socket. That didn't work either. I have one more trick up my sleeve. I have a set of e-torx sockets and it looks like an e14 socket will fit. Let's try it out. Nice. 
Success. Anyway, let's remove that valve cover. It came off really easy, which makes sense considering how much it was leaking. After I removed the valve cover, I noticed there was gray RTV sealant all over the gasket. So apparently someone else was in here before. Maybe that was done during the previous timing belt replacement. Anyway, I need to remove that old gasket. But before I do that, I'm going to remove the plastic and rubber parts from the valve cover. You could probably get away with leaving that stuff on, but I don't want to risk it. And here's why I removed the plastic and rubber parts. I'm using a propane torch to soften up the gasket. Hopefully that will make it easier to remove. A heat gun would probably work too. I was able to pry out most of it with a big screwdriver, but I needed to use a pick and a small screwdriver to get the rest. Then I scrubbed it with a wire brush. I won't lie, it was pretty tedious. Before installing the new gasket, I want to make sure the valve cover is nice and clean. So I cleaned it with super clean heavy duty degreaser. It did a great job. Earlier, I mentioned adapting the gasket to fit the valve cover. Here's what I was talking about. The gasket has raised sections that fit into the grooves in the valve cover. The gasket fits into all the grooves except one. On this one section of the gasket, the raised part needs to be trimmed back. It's about 3 eighths of an inch too long. I trimmed it with a razor blade. Now the gasket is ready to install. I'm going to glue it to the valve cover with contact cement. While the contact cement is setting up, I'll clean the cylinder head surface with brake cleaner. I also took a look at the camshaft and lifters, and they look pretty good. Now let's install the gasket onto the valve cover. I'm also going to reinstall the plastic and rubber parts that I removed earlier. And the valve cover is ready to install. But before I install it, I'm going to put a dab of black RTV silicone in the sharp corners on each end of the camshaft. Oops, I almost forgot. I decided to replace the valve cover bolts with hex head bolts. I guess it pays to have a nut and bolt collection. These guys are the same thread size, but have a 10 millimeter bolt head. Anyway, let's reinstall the valve cover, but I won't make you sit through the whole assembly process. Last but not least, I want to clean the oil and grime off of the engine. I waited to do that until the new gasket was installed. I figured if the old gasket was leaking oil out of the engine, it might also leak cleaning chemicals and water into the engine. At the very least, the engine looks better. I'll drive it around for a while and see if the new gasket did the job. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.